Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the best way to get started learning and building with F Sharp. So I love F Sharp. Over the past few years, it's become my favorite language and a core part of my tech stack. But it took a lot of time and effort to understand why it was good and how to use it effectively. In this post, I wanna share a few resources that I found useful in my F Sharp journey to hopefully make yours a little easier. Why F Sharp? The first and biggest hurdle is always, why should I use F Sharp? This is the same for any programming language or technology. There are so many options, each with their own trade-offs. And as always, there is no single best option for everyone. It all depends on your situation. So the best way to answer this is really to give you a little crash course in what F Sharp is, what its trade-offs are, and why that might be useful, and allow you to compare that with your own use case and values to see if it's a good fit. My recommendation for this is the Why Use F Sharp series by Scott Wolaschen. It may look a little long, but it is absolutely, totally worth it. This will give you everything you need to know about F Sharp and links to a lot of supplementary material if you want to dive deeper. F Sharp for Fun and Profit is an absolute treasure trove of info on F Sharp and functional paradigms. Start here, read it through, and if you're still interested, check out some of these other resources. And this is basically the gateway for me to getting into F Sharp um, and I had to read it a few times to kind of understand what it meant. What were the implications of this new way of thinking about things? Because it's very different from like kind of like the OO or procedural um, style of things. So you can totally use F Sharp for that. And honestly, change the way that I think about programming for the better, I think. And even when I go back to these other languages, it's kind of shows you what else is possible. So great place, great way to get started. Might take a little bit, but totally, totally worth the time you invest in it. Also, another call out is if you're into domain driven design, I would highly recommend Scott's book. Um, Scott being the, the person that wrote this website as well, um, Domain Modeling Made Functional. This is the single best book I've ever read on the topic, showing how simple and powerful domain modeling can and should be uh, when done correctly. And this is basically how I think about building all sorts of apps these days. Um, and it's made things like so much simpler, so much better. And when I see systems, you know, nowadays, which is like most systems that don't do this well, it is like kind of crazy how, how these like tiny little changes make, make everything much better. So I would highly recommend that um, as well. F Sharp Fundamentals. Okay, so you're interested in playing around with F Sharp, but it probably looks weird. It's a new language after all, so you need to learn some new syntax, but it's also got some design choices that are different from most languages on the market. But I'll tell you, this is a feature, not a bug, though, you know, it might take some time to, to come around to that. Now here are a few resources you can use for reference to better understand some F Sharp fundamentals if you get stuck or curious. So the first is the official Microsoft F Sharp docs. You can knock Microsoft for a lot of things, but they've got incredible documentation. Microsoft is the main builder and supporter of F Sharp, and they have a huge library of well-crafted and maintained documentation to support it. This is a great place for learning more about the standard library and common usage patterns. Here's an example documentation page for F Sharp lists. And you can see here that they have so many different um, articles on so many different uh, parts of F Sharp. And they'll usually have like common ways of using them and then how you might do different kinds of operations that are common, a lot of different properties and kind of just like really in depth documentation on what the thing is and what are common ways to use this um, and things like that. So really, really great documentation. The next is the official F Sharp docs. So similarly, F Sharp has reference documentation for each function in its standard library. These are great for understanding available functions and usages, but have less on broader usage patterns. So an example for F Sharp lists from the standard library is like this. And so it's really easy to see all of the um, kind of functions that are within the standard library. And you can even open up these little guys and it'll give you more information um, and often some example usages as well. And this is more common to like most other programming languages where the documentation is really just a reference. So this is really good for getting those specific references for a specific function when you want it. But we also got this great Microsoft documentation for more about like patterns and stuff like that. So if you're looking for references, those are the places to go. But often you wanna get a better idea of how people actually use these things in practice. And I think for a lot of people, like kind of reading the official docs kinds of feels stuffy and textbooky and either like you just bounces off of you or it's not in language that you would use. And so you kind of need a different format for it to kind of work. And so for that, I've got a few recommendations. Um, if you're into videos, a fast F Sharp makes a lot of videos on writing very fast systems with F Sharp, but also has a large collection of videos exploring F Sharp fundamentals. I mean, you can find his YouTube channel here. Great guy. And you can see like in his videos, he's got all sorts of different uh, talks about patterns and intros to different kind of like F sharp things. 
um, a little bit of discussions about patterns and strategies and stuff like that. So if you're into video, really great uh, YouTube channel, would, would highly recommend. Now, if you don't like videos and you're more kind of like a reader, um, there's also some books we've got. So Central F Sharp is supposed to be a pretty good book to get you up to speed. I've never personally read this book, um, but it's gotten really good reviews and the author is very helpful and knowledgeable in the F Sharp community. So I'm sure it's great. Um, yeah, Ian Russell is pretty prolific on Twitter and that's where uh, I've seen his stuff and it's always pretty good stuff. So I'm sure this is a great book and I think you can get it for free as well if you're into reading. Okay, building software with F Sharp. All right, so you now want to use F Sharp and you know the fundamentals or at least how to unblock yourself. And you wanna build real software with F Sharp. Get going. But that might feel a little overwhelming. So maybe you want some inspiration from other people building an F Sharp to help you get started. For this, we've got a few options. So the first is the F Sharp community. Uh, there's a pretty active though, you know, small community on Twitter. Um, you can find us with the, the hashtag F Sharp. Uh, on Reddit, we've got our F Sharp, lots of people on there. Um, discussing, having questions, stuff like that. And then we've got a few Discord channels um, that are supported by the F Sharp Software Foundation. Um, and you can find all the links there from their website along with like the forums that are there. And we've got like other .NET um, channels that have a much bigger community that we're also a part of as well. So you can check that out if you're trying to get connected with some people. Um, I would also recommend the F Sharp Weekly. So Sergey Tihon, he writes F Sharp Weekly. He also writes the F Sharp Advent Calendar at the end of the year. Um, and this is a great way to like see kind of highlights from the ecosystem. Um, everything from like news to new releases from like .NET releases, F Sharp releases, um, library releases that, that are used widely throughout the community uh, to just community discussions on things like language suggestions and kind of the future of .NET, F Sharp, et cetera. So I think this is a great way to get a feel for what's going on. Um, and it's, you know, just once a week, so you can kind of pop in, get a feel for what's going on, and then you don't you don't have to keep track of it for a while. And then finally, I build lots of projects, uh, mostly with F Sharp these days, and share updates on what I'm building, how I built them, and my learnings along the way here on the channel, here on my blog, um, and post them out to all my socials as well, uh, if you want to get those that way. Um, this has led to a pretty large backlog of F Sharp posts. I think I'm up to like 100 now in the past few years, and mostly focused on building full stack server-side rendered web apps with F Sharp. So I'm not really into the fundamentals. Um, I'm not really like why F Sharp. I'm more like how can we use F Sharp for these applications, mostly building web apps. And so if you're interested in any of this, I want to get some updates. Uh, you can get updates from me on Twitter. It's where I post most of my links. Um, you can also get my email list, though I only send out like once a quarter. Um, or you can visit any of my other socials listed on my homepage, and that's where I'll be sending out regular updates. Next. Now, of course, the very best way to learn how to build is to build things yourself. So go build and let us know what you're building. If you wanna get a head start with a production ready full stack F Sharp app, you can check out CloudSeed, the F Sharp project boilerplate, which I used to start all my projects, basically gives you a full stack app in like 10 minutes. Um, and it's got everything that you kind of need for an app. So it's got, you know, backend, it's got data migration, it's got data ORM, um, got local setup that's orchestrated with Docker, uh, shows you how to do server-side rendering, has Tailwind in there for, for styling. Um, so basically everything I found that's useful and requires a lot of boilerplate to set up. Yep. And if you like this post, you might also like CloudSeed Quick Start, which shows you how to get set up with that full stack F Sharp app in about 10 minutes. Um, you can also look at how I host my server side rendered F Sharp site on Google Cloud for less than $1 per month to kind of see how this works in production, get an idea of, of how it might look if you built your own. And then finally, why I'm moving from Svelte Kit to F Sharp, which is how I previously was building a lot of my full stack web apps, but eventually decided F Sharp was just better for me overall um, and kind of how I, how I decided that for myself. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.